Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another edition of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal this morning. Today we're going to be riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on KTM's 2020 790 Adventure R. This morning's episode is brought to you by First Gear. On today's ride I'm wearing the First Gear ADV Air Mesh Jacket air speed textile glove and first gear heated jacket liner if you want to know more about these items please check the link in the description of this video now let's put the helmet on and go for a ride well guys here it is ktm's 2020 790 adventure r this is an off-road specific variation of the 790 adventure which we tested earlier in an mc commute episode now the r spec 790 Adventure varies from the standard model by its use of a thicker and long-traveled WP Explorer fork. More suspension travel on the rear. It's got more aggressive off-road style tires from Bridgestone Batlax Adventure Cross A41. Instead of a dual seat, it has that single piece seat so you can slide on the back of it when you're riding off-road. It also ditches the traditional windscreen for this small fly screen. I really like the aesthetics of this motorcycle. It looks very aggressive. It looks purpose-built. It looks like a dirt bike. And that's what I like so much about it. But enough talking about it. Let's swing a leg over it and see what it's like to ride. All right, guys. Here it is. Traditional mechanical key, as you can see here. I like that. Turned it on. Ready to race. Fired it up. We have the display switched to night mode. So just like your iPhone with iOS 13, you have a backlit dark display. So black, black, black background, white numbers. I really like that. This R-Spec Adventure model adds a rally specific mode. So you can enable rally mode and what rally mode does is it allows you the most aggressive throttle map and it allows you to adjust ABS and tweak traction control based on what you like. When you're riding, which we'll do now, you can adjust traction control on the fly with this switch gear here. Sorry guys, it keeps defaulting in the other mode. Let's just see if we can get it to work. That's the one clunky thing I don't like about this 790 Adventure is the menu system and the display is rather clunky. KTM overhauled that display and electronic menu navigation system with its 2020-1290 Super Duke R and I can't wait for them to apply that correction to this motorcycle that's going to be a big plus ergonomically this bike is very comfortable seat is nice and big and wide foot pegs are not too high they're not too low I like the serrated nature of them they have a lot of grip against the boot of your shoe or the sole of your shoe I should say very nice. Handlebar is nice and wide. You can also adjust the handlebar in three position increments. We have it in the middle position right now. I like it in the middle position. It's not too forward. It's not too far back. I like that this motorcycle has these plastic hand guards. These work really nicely off-road and keep your mitts warm. So when you're riding in, in cold weather, your hands won't be cold. And away we go, guys. So this 790 Adventure R is powered by KTM's LC8C parallel twin engine. It's a 799cc water-cooled eight-valve ultra-compact parallel twin. So this motorcycle was originally fitted in the 790 Duke street bike, then fitted in the 790 Adventure and Adventure R. And I really like the engine in this motorcycle. 
uh, thing I like about it the most is just how small it is. It's very compact dimensionally. So it's very small. It's got a great feel to it. KTM cleverly fitted uh, unique bottom end. So the crankshaft, crankshaft design and the firing order is unique and it's designed to simulate the feel of KTM 75 degree V twin engines. So this engine has has a punchy feel to it, just like the V twin. It also has that pleasing V twin like character. So it's got a little bit of vibration to it. It's got good torque. It just feels like a fun engine to operate, and I like that. There is some vibration through the controls, but I wouldn't deem it excessive. You definitely feel it more than other motorcycles, but that is the design of KTM's V-twin engines, so it follows in that, in that format, and I like that. Eighty-five horsepower is what this motorcycle puts out at the back tire. It also puts out a good amount of torque over 50, 50 foot-pound from as low as 3,500 RPM. So this motorcycle has a lot of grunt to it. Really takes off the line very well. Also like that. This particular 790 Adventure is equipped with an electronic quick shifter with up and down. So you can change gears without using the clutch, going up through the six speed gearbox, and then when you downshift, you don't have to use the clutch either. And that's a really handy feature when you're going around turns with a bit of lean angle at speed. It helps keep this, the chassis stable. Obviously the fitment of these more dirt oriented tires compromise the road stability a little bit but it's still nice to have going through the six speed gearbox the gear ratios feel well spaced gearing's not too tall it's not too short it definitely has a little bit shorter and more close ratio gearing compared to a street bike but you want that for when you're riding off-road, you want that engine to be able to give good torque right away at low speed. There we go. Even does some wheelies. There's a Yami guy. You're racing. All right, better slow down, guys. That was fun. A turn. 21-inch, 18-inch wheel-equipped Dirt bikes aren't supposed to handle on the road that well with more aggressive ADV style off-road tires, but they do. KTM really did their homework in terms of handling on this motorcycle. Handles well on the street and on the dirt, which you will soon find out. Right now we're riding on the notorious bumpy road and the 790 Adventure R's up-spec 48mm WP Explorer fork. I really like this fork. This is the same type of fork that Husqvarna and KTM fits on their enduro style motorcycles. This fork's really awesome because it actually offers spring preload adjustment. There's a lever on each side of the fork. You can't see it here because it's buried, but there's a lever where you can adjust the spring tension of the fork in plus three and plus six uh, settings and that basically compresses the fork spring more and elevates the preload so you get a little bit more ride height you get a little bit more just performance if you like that fork spring with a more loaded feel and I do Rebound and compression damping adjusters are located atop the fork leg. You don't need any tools, typical KTM style. You can make an adjustment using your fingers. Very nice touch. The fork also has these cool red rubber wiper sliders on it. So you can 
visually see the amount of fork travel you're using and that'll help you tweak the preload setting. So if you're burying the fork too much, you add some preload and that'll help keep it from riding really low. Really nice touch. The PDS style shock, the shock mounts between the frame and swing arm without a linkage. There's no linkage, PDS style. The shock also offers 9.4 inches of travel. So 9.4 inches, 9 inches of travel front and rear versus that 8.7, I believe, on the standard model. So a little bit more travel, a little bit more beefy components to hold up better when you're hitting obstacles off-road. So right now we're riding in rally mode. We were fumbling with it with it earlier when we left. Rally mode gives most aggressive throttle response. You want real aggressive throttle response when you're riding in off-road situations. Well, it depends. If you're riding in sand and, and that kind of stuff, you want a real aggressive power band. If you're riding in hard pack that's dry without having any rain in quite a long time, you might want to mellow the power band down just to have a little bit more grip. The rally mode also allows you to tweak the ABS sitting. Right now we have ABS in off-road mode, and that applies front ABS, but manually disables rear ABS, so you can lock up the back tire. Yet, the front wheel still has ABS enabled, cornering ABS nonetheless, so the ABS system takes into account lean angle, helps mitigate front wheel lockup. Another really neat thing I like about the rally mode is you can adjust slip. That big number two on the bottom, slip. You can adjust that here. One is the least amount of traction control intervention and eight, nine is the highest. So you can adjust that in real time. Now, KTM's done a really good job engineering the traction control system to be able to perform in an off-road setting. So riding off-road, you want wheel spin. You need wheel spin. The bike won't handle properly if you don't have wheel spin when you're riding off-road. So KTM actually engineered wheel spin into the, into the uh, computer programming of the traction control. You can adjust this in real time when you're riding. Very nice feature. Again, the dash display, five inch color, no touch screen. KTM insists that it wants its motorcycle riders to have their hands on the controls at all times. That's why they don't fit touch screen. I like this dark mode the touch screen has, but the numbers and everything is too small, too compact. I can't wait for KTM to fit the 2020 1290 Super Duke R's instrument panel larger, more vivid, better colors, better menu navigation. You guys are going to love it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they fit it on this motorcycle. 12 volt power plug right here. So you can plug in a USB 12 volt power adapter and charge your gadgets. Love that quick shifter. It makes going through the gearbox so fun. This motorcycle does not have cruise control. Tro cruise control is an option. It's, it also doesn't have heated grips. Heated grips would have been a nice feature on this motorcycle. The shorter fly screen, you know, it doesn't do a bad job of moving air above the rider. You can also adjust it. You need a screwdriver to adjust it. It's got a high and low position. But not so bad, I thought I would miss the traditional 790 Adventures windscreen, but I'm perfectly content without it. I actually like the overall styling of the motorcycle without it. Cruising around 75 miles per hour top gear, we're pulling 5,000 RPM. A lot of power, twist the throttle, you don't have to downshift, and the engine makes power right away, which is good. Mirrors are a little bit buzzy. Not a big fan of KTM mirrors. The they just kind of feel a little bit cheap. It's 
speaking of cheap, I wish this motorcycle had LED turn signals. Those halogen bulb turn signals are kind of cheap. But it does have LED headlight and taillight, and the LED headlight on this motorcycle is exceptionally bright. You turn the high beams on on this motorcycle after dark, and you'll be impressed with the swath of light it generates. Very nice for guys who like to ride after dark. Overall, a pretty comfortable motorcycle for KT from KTM. This bike uses a set of hydraulic double disc brakes up front and a hydraulic disc brake at the back. Big radial mount calipers give very good stopping power up front. Thankfully the fork has good damping quality so when you're using the front brake aggressively it doesn't just blow through the stroke and, and feel all weird. I like the high-end suspension components on this bike. Conversely the back brake, double piston, caliper equipped back brake, a lot of power, a lot of feel. The brake pedal you can also adjust its position, which is nice. So I like how much tunability is in this motorcycle. Sorry guys, we're speeding a little bit, but we gotta get away from that traffic. All right, another turn. Love how nice this bike handles on the pavement, even with these ADV tires. Bridgestone Batlax Adventure Cross A41. This tire is designed to go against Continental's TKC80. And I like these tires because they have good grip on the pavement, yet good grip off, off pavement too. Very nice tire from Bridgestone. Huge 5.3 gallon fuel tank on this bike. The shape of the fuel tank has been specifically positioned to be low. Carries the bulk of its weight very low in the chassis, which helps the handling dynamic of this motorcycle. This is a very light and nice handling motorcycle for a 470 pound machine. KTM did a lot of engineering with that gas tank to make sure that it will stand up in case you hit rocks or tip over or bash it up. It's super strong plastic designed not to crack, not to leak. We've been averaging around 42 miles to a gallon, miles per gallon on this motorcycle. So you're gonna get a good amount of range on this bike. That's why I like this machine. I like motorcycles with big gas tanks. It means you can go farther and you have to go to the fuel station less, which is great. This 790 Adventure R is Bluetooth compatible. You can download KTM's MyRide app for $8. It's strange that they would charge you for it, but you have to pay $8. And then you can pair your phone to it and it'll give you turn-by-turn -turn directions here. You can also manipulate the music so you can go through your phone's music and select different tracks. Of course, you have to have a Bluetooth enabled headset to listen to the music because there's no speakers on the bike. But neat that KTM's investing in technology. I like that you can manually disable the ABS. You can manually disable the traction control. This motorcycle is very customizable, which I like. All right guys, we're almost to the motorcyclist office. Let's see if we can do the wheelie test here. Put it in slip mode one, lowest setting. Let's see what she's got. Yep, she wheelies real good, real good. 
Yep, nice wheel, it's a KTM. Good ride by wire, throttle calibration. I like this bike. Clutch feels nice. Ooh, we can we can back it in a little bit because the ABS is off. We kind of screwed it up though. But yeah, very good bike. Good wheelies, good throttle calibration. Nice clutch. Clutch feels much better than the 790 Deuce clutch for whatever reason. I don't know how, but it does. $13,700 for this 790 Adventure R. $1,000 more than the base model. And I really like the spike. Alright guys, here she is. KTM's 2020 790 Adventure R. Let's do some Q&A on this bike. Right to the top. Could you see yourself doing eight hours of tarmac road touring on this bike? Absolutely I could. This bike's super comfortable, even with the ADV spec semi-knob tires. These tires have a lot of adhesion on the road. They don't feel awkward. This is a very comfortable motorcycle. It's not undersprung. I would absolutely do eight hours of touring on the road on this bike. A underscore Sansoda asks, does it wheelie? Yes, it wheelies. It wheelies great. What a great motorcycle for wheeling. Does it do a stoppy? This bike will not do a stoppy. It might do a stoppy off-road with perfectly moist dirt, but on the street you're going to have a hard time doing that. What's your opinion on the 790 when compared to its bigger little brothers? What weight class do you think is beat? I'm sure he means best for ADV bikes. I really like the 790 Adventure package. The 1090, 1190, 1290, those bikes are awesome for sure but they're just too big they're good for touring across the country cross across the interstate but you know for off-road riding they're just too big and heavy i think the 790 middleweight class is the the right size for riding on the road riding off-road of course the 790 adventure is so awesome because it's light, 470 pounds. It's got real enduro suspension. That fork is a real enduro fork, which allows you to wail off-road on this motorcycle. Which, speaking of off-road, we need to ride this thing off-road. Let's try it out. And here we are, guys, on the dirt, on KTM's 790 Adventure. Slip is a little bit high on this bike. Let's turn it down here. Down least restrictive mode. One. Perfect. So as promised, KTM's middleweight 790 adventure bike delivers true adventure for those who are willing to go off the beaten path. And this is where the eight point Four inches of suspension travel really comes into play. That and the Bridgestone Batlax Adventure Cross AX41 tires. This is where you want to have a little bit of a knob just to have grip against the dirt. Right now we're riding on pretty dry, hard packed dirt. And this motorcycle is surprisingly capable. I mean, we're going 30 miles per hour right now. Not exactly slow. You can go over some of these rocks and the bike takes it. Suspension doesn't just bottom out. It stays up top in the stroke. Of course, this isn't an enduro bike. You can't ride it as such, but for a road-going street legal street bike, pretty impressed with how well, this motorcycle works overall. Right now we have it in ABS setting off-road, so the same setting as the as on the road. So front ABS is on. Again, it's lean angle sensitive. Helps mitigate front tire lockup when you're riding on the pavement or dirt. Rear ABS with that setting is disabled. So you can lock up the rear brake, 
for when you want to slide the bike or you want it to stop in the quickest amount of time as possible. Of course, the Explorer fork and the PDS shock absorber damping and spring preload adjustment is all easy to do, so you can help tune the suspension for the way you like it to feel when you're riding off-road. Very nimble too, 470 pounds with a full tank of gas. It does feel like a street bike, but you'd also be surprised with how nimble it feels. Also like how thin this motorcycle is, that LC8C parallel twin engine allows for a very slim riding position. And the serrated foot pegs have a lot of grip against the bottom, the sole of my boot. So that, in a nutshell, is a quick little MC Commute style review of the 790 Adventure R in the dirt. Very versatile motorcycle from KTM. I absolutely would get this bike. But let's answer some more questions and wrap things up. We'll see you guys later. Let's wrap things up and we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. All right guys, as you saw, great bike from KTM on the road, off the road. Would I spend $13,700 on the 790 Adventure R? Absolutely I would. I would totally buy this bike. It is quick, it sounds neat, it's comfortable, has a great headlight, suspension works well, on road, off road. It's just a really nice and very versatile motorcycle from KTM. I absolutely fully would buy this motorcycle. I also like that it comes with a one-year warranty, 12,000 miles, whatever comes first, and the maintenance intervals are rather few and far between. 15,000 kilometers between maintenance, that's right around 8,500, 9,000 miles. So a very nice, reliable, awesome motorcycle from KTM. Well, there you have it, guys. That's a wrap from today's MC Commute. Make sure to give us a subscribe if you like this video, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.